Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. Thank you for joining this channel. Please be sure to give this video a like at the end or at the beginning or at the middle. And please be sure that after you've properly listened to the video, if you are led by the Lord to share this video, then share this video thoughtfully with someone else who may need to know these things. Everybody does need to know these things, but let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you as to who to share with. I'm continuing with the Supernatural series. The more I go over the work that is on the Master's Voice, you can find the URL for this work in the description box below. Just touch the little V tab and it will collapse everything down so you can see all the other channels that I have on BitChute, on Rumble, and on Brighton. And there is a Spanish channel. You can also find the URL for that below, as well as how to support this work if you are so led. As I am going through this work, I am finding that there is a large body of what I call the supernatural. I've shared, and by now we understand, excuse me if you're new, that as a Christian, we have to know that the very walking out of our faith is a supernatural walk. We are following an unseen God whose hand, however, is very much visible in our lives. And the purpose of the master's voice is to bring forth the words, the warning, and the admonition of the Lord to the United States of America first and to the world. So this is a channel whereby I am speaking forth the warnings and the judgment of the Lord. And the reason that the supernatural series may be a little difficult to traffic with and to move with is because in the hearts of people is the question, but why is this going to happen? And I always say there is nothing on this work that can be divorced from the continuous rising of human sin. So the reason that I am here in the first place, the reason that the Lord has set a word in my mouth and raised me up to speak his word to this final generation is because the rising of human sin, the rising of human rebellion, and the refusal of man as a collective to honor God, to worship God, and to exalt him alone as God has reached the place that now there are penalties and consequences for both individual sin and the sin of humanity as a collective. So these things that I'm speaking about are not things that have not existed in the scripture from before times. These things have always existed. And instead, in fact, they have been planned as part of the final days of humanity before any of the generations were born. So when I am talking about the demonic entities and beings known as aliens, or when I'm speaking about giants and I'm speaking about fallen angels in particular, fallen angels are a phenomenon of rebellion against God by spirit beings, which itself devolves from an earlier war in the heavenlies by another spirit being, the archangel, not an archangel, but the angel Lucifer who mounted a, rev a revolution in heaven and was defeated by the other angels. He was cast into the lower heavens and he is known as many things, the dragon, the prince of the power of the air, Satan, as the name that we commonly known him, know him. And now he is here and there are many others as part of his forces, I should say, his ranks. And so whether we understand it or not, we must come up quickly in our knowledge base and come to know that there is an end times battle on this earth for souls. Souls is what Jesus Christ loves. Souls is what Jesus Christ died for. Souls, human souls, is what the Lord Jesus Christ is seeking to bring into eternal fellowship with him now while we have our physical form and later when we are raised to new life, whether we are dead or still alive, into eternal fellowship with the heavenly father. However, in between this time and the final time, these prophecies are sort of cracking and opening many of the things that are already in scripture. So I guess what I'm trying to say is none of this is new news. The only thing about it is that it's new to us, mostly because we have not been taught 
mostly because these topics never come up in a traditional church setting. And so it's necessary for us to realize that it is our responsibility. It is not God's responsibility. It is our responsibility to get the information that we need so that we will have a proper understanding of the time that will face us as the generation that will see these things. Today's word is called the silver mist, and it has two primary themes in it. One of it is talking about yet another coming of another type of evil into this world. And the second part is talking about something that I realized by going over many of the prophecies is quite a theme that the Lord has been speaking about. And that is the fact that this earth is going to go dark. It is going to go dark without sun, without moon, and without stars. It is going to be a pervasive darkness, meaning that the entire earth will lay in darkness. The seas will be dark, the sun, the moon, the stars. Every nation in this world is going to have the lights go out at a specific time in human history. And it is during that time that great harm, great harm will be unleashed upon this planet. And therefore, if you have the habit of simply coming to the videos and hearing, but not actually listening. Hearing is where the stuff goes in and it's going out, or you're listening, but then when the information is coming in, you're mixing the information with terror, which is like having sand in your smoothie, or you're mixing it with unbelief, which is like having manure in your smoothie. It's not going to benefit you. When you hear the word of God coming forth, the right and the proper response is to listen and then process it in the heart, keeping out your personal beliefs about it or what so-and-so else may have heard about it. True processing of information happens on the merits of that information itself, which means listen to what you hear and then the Holy Spirit will be able to dialogue with you about it later in prayer. It is the Holy Spirit who will confirm or deny if prophetic truth is from him or from an unclean vessel or an unclean source. So today's word, November 9, 2020, and it is called the silver mist. This was quite a revelation that the Lord gave me. The banner scripture is Ezekiel 1 verse 1. Now it happened in the 30th year on the fifth day of the fourth month that I was by the river Shabar standing with the exiles and the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. And so the Lord showed me the world as he often shows it to me. So the Lord will, will often show me the world sort of as a building. Sometimes I dream that I am in a building and in that building are millions of people. I do not even know how you can fit millions into a building, but I will dream that I'm in a building with hundreds and hundreds of thousands or even millions of people. And each person has a little room. And that I came to understand is the Lord showing me a picture of the world with each of us having our own little life. And so I dreamt that I was on a foggy plane. It was a very foggy place. And on this plane were many high rise buildings. And in each high rise building were multiple stories. And on each floor using stairs only, I did not see elevators, were many, many rooms. And each room had either a family or a single person or a couple. So everyone who was in these buildings had their room. I was also in my building and there were so many people crammed into my building that I knew it was the same situation in all of the other buildings. And so I came out of my building and I came to this plane. A plane is just like a flat area with a little grass and nothing else. So planes don't usually have trees or rock formations. They're just flat and empty. Very good for farming. I came out to the plane and I wanted to exercise and I met my favorite cousin there. And so as we were walking and stretching our legs, he says something very curious to me. He says, Celestial, have you noticed that there is no sun and no moon? And I said, I've only noticed that it's foggy and weird, but he continued and I will read what he said. He said, nobody here has seen the sun in three days. The sun and the moon have not been seen in three days. This is artificial lighting that they're trying to provide for us. I don't know where it comes from, but just look at the sky. 
It has no sun in it from horizon to horizon, even though we have this pale and foggy light. And so I looked up and I saw that in a certain part of the sky, there was a concentration of light. So it would seem that it was the sun, but this was not the sun because even when it's very foggy. The sun will usually sit behind the fog as this dim red ball. And eventually, because it's so hot, it will burn away whatever mist or fog is there. Even when it's rainy, the rain eventually is removed and we can see the light of the sun. But as I stood studying the sky, I could see no sun. It was instead this kind of false lighting behind the fog. So the fog was the main thing, but then behind the fog was almost something like artificial kitchen lighting. You know that artificial white lighting, but not as bright. So imagine it coming through a layer of cotton or fog. That's what it was like. And in this dream, my cousin and I stood upon this plane for three days and the sun did not rise and the moon did not rise and any stars at night. So we had the artificial pale sky by day. And then by night, it was a pitch darkness that came in waves. So it was almost like someone was painting. You would first get the medium blue as we, as when the sun is setting in real life. Then you got a darker indigo blue and then a very deep navy blue. And then the sky would become pitch black. And in this darkness, we could not even see one another or hand in front of face, but we stood on that plane. And this was just God metaphorically showing me. We stood on that plane for three days and three nights and we saw nothing of the normal sky phenomenon. And I was amazed. I was so confused. And in my brain, I kept thinking, but who can remove the sun? Who can take away the sun? And who is this they that my cousin was saying is providing artificial lighting for us? Where are the sun and moon? Where have they gone? And why is it so dark? And I can't see anything. And then after the three days passed, I saw another sky event. The sky became the most beautiful and radiant palette of colors. And I've made reference to this excessively vivid, beautiful, colorful sky in the prophecy, Desolations Are Determined, part six. To help yourself, it's really helpful if you watch Desolations Are Determined, part five, and then also Desolations Are Determined, part six. Desolations part five is just recently made a video, but if you go to the blog, themastersvoice.com and you read part five and part six, the Lord gave them to me within a very short time period of each other. And those two prophecies truly blend with support and bring deeper understanding to what I'm talking about. I saw red and purple and gold and orange and indigo, and the sky was very orderly with the redder spectrum on one side and then the bluer spectrum on the other side. And just as I was watching, the sky shattered like glass along a fault line. So the fault line, the image on this prophecy looks like it's, it's shattered in a circle. But as I saw, the sky was like this. If I put my hand towards you like this, the sky was actually shaped like this in a parabolic arc. And I saw the split happen from behind me and run in a shatter line across the sky forward like this. And when the heavens shattered after this beautiful sky appeared, the sky began to tear itself open just the way you would tear a very fresh bun and the bun would be tearing and making this thing like this, the sky shattered and began to open itself out and a living silver mist began to pour out of that hole. And at that time, I did what Celestial always does in wisdom and I exited that plane with lightning capacity and speed. Now, I have shared in multiple prophecies and I shared in this one. I always ask you to read these prophecies because it's better for your understanding. If you take in the information in a format that will stay with you longer, the videos cover many things, but the prophecies written will stay with you. I have said that there is wickedness in this world that is 
older than the need for a body. And as I was meditating on this, just before I made this video, the Lord even brought me back to John chapter one and verse one that says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was with God from the beginning. And the Lord was saying to me, Celestial, do you see that my son had no need for a body except for the very brief period of 33 years that he spent with you people? So I was saying, God, I see that Spirit has no need to inhabit a flesh casing. Horror movies and popular culture has made us think that everything in our society is tactile, meaning that you can reach out and touch it. It will respond to your five senses of taste and sight and smell and touch and things like that. And it does not work like that. The things of the spirit are bigger than, greater than, and they transcend the natural need for casing. So for instance, in the final times, many of the people who reject God and refuse to receive God as Lord and Savior will lack that protective covering of the blood of Jesus. They will also lack the protective life system of the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit dwelling within the body. So they're basically going to be like little meat sausages walking around. And when there is the unleashing of the spirits of the Nephilim, for some Nephilim are demons, the, the leftover spirits of the Nephilim that cannot flee this plane. Why? They were forbidden by God to go into the spirit realm because they had human mothers. And so some of them are not in ice chambers and some of them are not hidden under volcanoes. Some of them move around in the spirit form and they are the demons that we know and battle against as Christians. So when people do not have the protective casing of the Lord Jesus Christ, these Nephilim will be able to easily infiltrate it to them. A human being who does not belong to Jesus Christ is under no protection. And to them, this is like coming up to a house that has a fully, fully equipped house with the TV and all the best Samsung stuff in there or whatever it is that people want to buy, Whirlpool and having two cars in the garage and the owner has no protection. You would just walk into a house like that and put a gun to their head and make them do what you say. And this is the position of demonized people. Somebody comes into the house and takes it over and there will be both spiritual and physical changes that you can track in a demonized person. And so because the evil that will come upon this earth in the final times will be not of the class, it will not be of the class that pastors and prophets, and apostles, teachers, and evangelists, and the lay persons of the church are used to. This will be evil that is older, that does not need a body to perform what it will perform. And so, I said that I fled, and the scripture that came to me as I was writing this is the verse from Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, and enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you and hide yourself, as it were, for a little while until the indignation is past. And this is a good verse for those who are hard of hearing and those who think that they are greater than the things that are coming. You see, there is a type of warfare that the Lord will certainly empower us to fight because his spirit in us is more than ready to confront that type of warfare. And when the Lord is ready, he will let you know, even in simple life decisions and battles and skirmishes, God always tells the listening and obedient sheep. I want you to step up and fight this. And there are times when the Lord will say, hold your peace and I will fight this. But there is a subset of humanity that is very foolish and does not listen. And I always warn about these people for I have seen millions of these people entering into early death. For instance, when I began to share about the fact that the earth will be dark, I began to get a lot of of as usual questions. What if we have to feed our animals? What if we had to feed our horses? What if we have to go out and feed our cows? And for me, the answer is very simple. In a time where, and I will quote the Lord's words, in a time where the darkness will be intense, dangerous, and alive. And then he said it again, and I put it in caps, dark that is alive. If you feel the need to go outside despite warnings from God's messengers, just know that as you feed your animals, 
you yourself will become feed for this is a type of darkness that can even inhabit the person and you will be driven mad if you are not consumed by the things that will have the right. There is a reason that the Lord said, come and enter into your chambers. This means that this is of a class that I do not wish you as flesh and blood to be exposed to. Come aside and be obedient and sit in silence and wait upon me with prayer, with fasting and entrusting your life and your children's life to my care. If you feel that that is the time to go out and feed Betsy the cow, the consequences shall be upon you. And so I fled into the building. I fled up to my bedchamber. And when I got into my room, I meet what I always find in these dreams. Tons of people that I do not know waiting for me to look after them and take care of them. My room was full of people. I didn't know these people, but there were men, women, children, and entire families crowded into the room for protection. And before I could think, wait, this is my room. How did these people get in here? I saw that this mist, for it was a living silver sparkly mist as if, you know, these pens that have ink gel in them, ink gel pens. When you, when you, if you were to break one of those pens and pour it out, it's a very thick kind of gel that comes through the pen, not like normal pen ink. This thing was silvery gray and it came down from the hole in the sky doing things like this, coming out like this and moving around in coils. It was also like a mist, but it definitely had this gel-like consistency and it killed people simply by coming upon them and would suck the living essence out of them. And as it was taking souls, as I would explain later, it was blackening with the souls of the dead. It was blackening with the souls of those that it was killing. And so I ran into my room and found it full and this mist like moving silver mercury. Oh, thank you, Lord. It was exactly like the substance in the movie Terminator 2, that man who would turn into the, the moving metal like thing. It was like that. This thing was moving across all the buildings of the plane. And of course it was taking those who did not belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I slammed my door, I saw this, there was a medium sized hole in my door, like acid had eaten through the door. And when I saw it, my heart sank because I knew that this was sin. In my absence, somebody who had come to my room for protection, for many people had seen this thing come down, had come into this room, but they had brought sin with them and the sin had destroyed the solidity and the integrity of my door. So my door looked like acid had eaten a hole bigger than my head in the door. And as I was thinking this, the mist came onto our floor. It saw this hole and began to pour through the hole. So it started coming exactly like a very long arm through the hole, but I was standing at the side in front of the hole and I began to scream out scripture in the name of Jesus. I arrest you with the blood. I speak the blood and the blood of Jesus rebukes you. I cast you out by the blood and you know, you must obey the blood. And this is where I said that no matter who may deny and who may say, well, I didn't learn this at seminary and show me the verse and give me a link. I know that the things of the end time, even when they appear inanimate, they can hear and they recognize those who have true authority in Christ Jesus and those who are just faking. I shared about the sons of Sceva and I said that if you only know Jesus through your pastor, if he is Jesus who pastor so-and-so preaches and you do not have a living pulsating day and night relationship with the Holy Father, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, these creatures will know. They are able to look past flesh into your spiritual tank and see if there is anything there or not. If your name is actually ref reflected in the register of heaven as Paul, we know, celestial, we know, or we've never heard of this person. They may be sitting in a church, but we don't know them here. 
these beings will know and they will have the right to attack. And so all these people, when that arm began to come in and hold itself up in front of me and I was shouting at it and speaking the blood of Jesus and rebuking it and telling it, you cannot enter here. Everybody else ran to a corner of the room and I'm telling you, there were tall men there, tall guys, and they were just crying and they just, they didn't have it in them. They were weeping and nobody was making a sound. The terror that these people were in is that they were weeping silently as I was fighting this battle by myself. And I said that I saw the power of Jesus' blood, but I also saw that if you have sin in your life, even a sin, it compromises your ability to command and use the blood. No demon will obey you and certainly not that very powerful otherling thing that I saw come into the earth in the last days through a shattered sky. And right at that point, the dream ended up and I woke up and I thought, good Lord, what is it that I have seen that will enter this world? What is this that will come down to us? And the Lord says, and I will read this as quickly as I can, mark my words, silver flesh will come to you and destroy you. This is the word of the Lord. The great deception is at hand and the killing fields will be fresh with blood. But those who have blood on the door and have turned from their sins will be saved. And you will see my mighty warriors arising in those days, men and women that are skilled in sword fighting with the word of God and by faith, these will save many people and they will preserve for me a remnant in the earth who will see my face at my coming. Put on the full armor of the Lord, therefore, that you may be counted worthy to escape in the evil day. For these are the days that are coming upon you, the evil day, the days of Noah, the day that will bring premature death even to children the day of wolves and destruction, says the Lord. Do not leave your homes for any reason in that day, but stay under the blood of the cross. Stay under the blood and put away sin from your midst, from your gatherings, from your homes, out of your congregations. I say this with God's authority. Sin is a reproach to any people. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ, and indeed, you shall be saved. Sin breaks the gate of protection. Sin breaks your armor, and sin breaks even the efficiency of your sword, which is the word of God. Sin is a shame to you, and sin is a reproach. Because of it, the enemy can attack and even destroy a Christian. So be mindful of your lives and repent of all sin daily. So I said here that when it, whether anyone believes these prophetic words or not, that is not for me. My mandate from the Lord is so clear, which is to declare his heart and declare the truth of the things that are in the scripture. And I wrote down a few scriptures here. The sun will go down for a period of time. It might be for three days as it was in the Exodus, and it might be for longer. In some of the prophecies where I have written, such as, I think it's called here, the word of the Lord, part two, I will link all these prophecies mentioned in the video below. In Exodus, it was three days, but in Isaiah 13, it just said that darkness will come. And so let me do something about the lighting as we go over the, over the scriptures. Just a moment. Here in Exodus chapter 10, and it is verses 21 to 23. It says, I'll start at verse 20. Then the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the children of Israel go. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And so as I just read from the prophetic word, you hear the Lord saying, stay in your places and do not move. And I also gave a word of caution to those who will always think, and I have to say that this is pervasive in 
all people across the world. There is something in humanity that causes them to rate scriptural things lower than earthly things. So the Lord will give a scriptural instruction and we see it even in the Bible many times, but there will always be those among the people of God who think that their natural need, the natural need to do this, or I just need to go and get this done. They, they esteem their momentary earthly need as higher than obeying the Lord's word. And almost always, unless God shows mercy, this ends in the destruction and the loss of life of that person. And this is because not that God is cruel, but scripture has to be obeyed above everything else, or there is a price that you pay. In Isaiah 13, Isaiah 13 and 10, let me go there quickly. Isaiah 13 also talks about darkness in the earth. And it says here in verse 10, I'll go from verse nine. See the day of the Lord comes cruel with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will no longer give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth and the moon will not cause its light to shine. Now you find in scripture, if you were to correlate verses that in Matthew chapter 24 and 29, it also talks about the sun being as dark as goat's hair and the moon becoming blood. And in Revelation 6, verses 12 to 14, it also talks about the sun being darkened in its course and the moon being turned to blood. And so there are other things that we will see. I will mention them briefly because there are videos coming up where I will deal with them. The Aurora Borealis is going to be a sign. God says that there will be great heavenly displays. He called them bright cosmic displays taking place in the heavens. And the Aurora Borealis will be one of them. This strange and beautiful movement of lights that you usually see in the further colder parts of the earth called the Northern Light will begin to become commonplace in parts of the world where you have never seen it before. So I saw once in a dream that the Aurora Borealis will even be visible here in New York City, where it has never shown its face because we do not have the weather or the geographical placement to see the Northern Lights. But the Northern Lights will appear in many parts of the world. There will also be beautiful, bright, vivid sunsets that are extremely red different shades of red. And you will also see extremely vivid red dawns taking place when it comes to the time that creatures and beings will be released from the heavens to come upon the earth. There will also be things like shooting stars, comets, and movement in something called the asteroid belt. I'm not sure what that is, but that's what he said. A movement in the asteroid belt. There will also be intense weather phenomena and strange clouds. I have spoken about these cloud formations that will come. They will be stacked. It will be stacked clouds like a like sort of a stack of dishes it will look like, or there will be strange clouds that look like bowls, either a bowl turned upside down or a bowl like that. You must be aware that inside these clouds will be sometimes the ships of these beings cloaked in the clouds, but other times it will be natural clouds like that. And so as we go further in the supernatural series, I will continue revealing all the things that our father, the lover of our souls wants to know. And we must know that God loves human souls more than people love their own souls. We have a watchtower in the heavenly father. We have been given the Holy spirit to live this life by. But the question is, as I bring forth these revelations and make sure that everyone understands that they are punishment for sin. What will we choose individually? The choice is with us. God bless you. This is Celestial with the master's voice. I thank you always for being here. Give a thumbs up and share the video. Subscribe and then you'll be able to access information that I share on the community page. I think I'm going to start sharing relevant prophecies for every video on the community page so people can go and study if they want. Thank you to all who support this ministry. You are a blessing and may the Lord return to you what you give. And until I see you again, take care and goodbye.